uh, from kitchen table to home office, well, obviously many people are suddenly working from home or maybe you did that longer. And I see many of you then back in my, in my clinic. We're going to talk about that later. And as Ali said, we think it's very important that you set up your, your home office and from the different uh, aspects. My name is Marielle uh, de Bruin. I'm from Holland. I live in Spain for a long, long time already. I'm originally a physiotherapist, studied that in Holland, and then I did osteopathy. So I'm an osteopath since 2012. And combining all things and, uh, well, over here you see my, uh, my details. I'm located in Mijas, which is just next to Frankirola, as we just, uh, just heard from Ali. Um, and let's just start. What we are going to do today, first, understanding the problem. Why is it so important we have a good work environment? And from my point of view, it's all about a good posture. And then we're going to talk a little bit about work-related injuries. So this is all a little bit of um, theory, but I think it's important that you realize that and that you hear that again, uh, because then you're going to do something. Uh, I hope so, at least. Then we're going to a little bit more the practical part. How do you turn your kitchen or dining table into a good work environment? or your office, because some of you may have a place where they work, a kind of office, a healthier place. And that's uh, where you have this PDF file I sticked in the chat, which you can just check if you have everything, what we're talking about, but it's um, the PDF file is exactly what is here in, um, in my presentation. And then we're going to talk about healthy work habits for a more productive day. And well, let's just, let's see, understanding the problem. Why is it so important we take care of a good posture, good work environment? Very simple, bad posture um, is predisposing work-related injuries. And the box that you see is not something that I looked up at internet, but something that I see in my clinic. What are people complaining of? Well, pain, aches and pains on the top of the shoulders, a lot of tension in this area, in the neck, headaches, a lot. Um, lumbar, thoracic spine issues, it might be pain, it might be a lot of stiffness, not getting out of the chair, that kind of things. Tendinitis, especially around the elbow, very often as well the shoulder. Other, other complaints, uh, pain in the wrist, swollen legs because you're sitting too long, loss of concentration. It doesn't seem to be a mechanical problem, but um, when you have aches and pains and tension, you start to lose concentration. And I think there is another reason why you start to lose concentration and then you just don't have a productive day. So uh, dry eyes and some, etc. But I think these are the main things um, that we're talking about. And what we want is do something about it and uh, prevent them. You see the picture? Um, yeah, over here. The picture of some bad postures. Um, I'm going to take you through it, but just some little things. If you're too high and your feet are dangling in the air, uh, if you're too big, and I really want to have you a look at the po at this thing that the one is sticking his head forward. I'm going to do that now, like that. And that's a position that we often have, apart from the text neck yeah, that you look down to text, it's in the computer or screen, it's this. And that's really causing a lot of problem. So we really have to avoid all that. What is, what is it? Why is it that a bad posture leads to 
injuries or, or loss of concentration? Well, it's the lack of movement for a longer period of time. Two highlights, movement, time. Even if you have the best posture possible and you don't break, uh, you don't break that, you, you stay for it for a long time, you will get issues. You need to move. And the more problems you have, the more often you need to move. And what people don't realize, I did a lot of, um, uh, I talked a lot about this in, in banks. I went to the location and see how people were sitting and, and talked uh, about all this. And they have all these comfortable chairs and a real setup office. And, but, fixed to the screen for a long time and still with a lot of issues. You really have to break. And big part of my job is not that only that when you have aches and pains that you come to the clinic and I try to fix it. Of course, we always try to prevent things, which is part of my job to tell you, which is why we are here. But a big part of the thing is scheduling, planning, I know, Lorraine, that's the word of your uh, year. Because you have to do something, but you have to recover from it. And that's with everything that you do, with every workout that you do, um, you have to give yourself time to recover. Now the time is that you sit for a long time in one position, you have to move to recover because sitting for a long time in one position gives you less blood supply. And that's your fuel, that's your, that's your food for everything. It's your oxygen. And it leads to fatigue. Fatigue in your tissue, in the ligaments, in, uh, in the muscles, in, so they just start to, to give aches and pains. And it leads to fatigue, literally, in your brain because your brain needs so much oxygen. And oxygen is transported by, uh, by your blood. So if somehow circulation is not going well, um, you even get this fatigue and that you can't think, loss of concentration, headaches, all that kind of thing. So we're talking about fatigue of um, tissues, your muscles, your, um, your ligaments, and fatigue about a brain, which probably mm, you didn't realize that they were related. Another thing, that it's the blood circulation. Circulation is a circle, so it needs to go in and out of your uh, tissues or your brain. And if that does is not fluid, you have less drainage. You use your oxygen, but you don't get rid of the waste product. And that leads to acidification. Poisoning is a big, strong word, but it's, it's on a micro thing. And it is like that. So we all have to um, really be careful that we do have circulation. And the only thing that we have circulation is that we move. If I bring my, close my hand, it's getting white because I squeeze my blood out a little bit. If I open it and close it, open it and close it, it's no problem at all. I do have circulation because I move. It goes in and out, in and out. And my hands start to be nice, to feel nice, warm and supple. If I close it, which is not a bad movement at all, but I keep it here for four hours, mm, it's difficult to open it. It starts to feel cold. It's different. So it's movement and time. Remember that and it will come back in this presentation for uh, uh, many times. Predisposed conditions, time, no breaks. That's what I mean with time, prolonged time. Poor posture 
you're going to talk about that not taking care of yourself because uh, the blood needs to bring something to your muscles oxygen but uh, some other things as well so water food sleep if you're tired of course um, others micro movements for example your thumb texting a lot it's using them so much that your muscles get um, it's a workout it's a workout for your thumb because you think it's a small movement but it's all day and then the muscles are getting tired and can give some uh, some pain then we get more inflammation things when you do this um when you don't move it's more the aches and pains and and stiffness when you move a lot and you don't rest them it's more the inflammation what comes up um other condition is poorly material or poor station setup sometimes we have perfect material which is what i found when i went on location but then the setup is something to talk about and we're talking about the table the chair if you use laptop or uh, desktop ipads uh, shoes i think this comes all from um the presentation on location for people that have to walk a lot but anyway glasses we're going to talk about glasses and eyesight very important pressure of work light and air light and air we're going to talk about well because the concentration the headaches have a lot to do with light and air we need oxygen every tissue your brain needs oxygen first thing is ventilation and light makes your eyes going like this or that you go forward to see I'm going to talk about it how you can um, easily make that better so solution try to do everything to good to bring a good work environment on different topics or make your home office a healthy place if you have a kind of a home office with a good chair and table and everything and from now on everything i'm going to talk about the step guide is in your healthy workspace guide uh, so you have that later it's kind of a checkbox that you can check do i have that do i have to buy that do i have to change that because sometimes you just need 10 minutes to set up your uh, workstation and we don't do that we just leave it we just start our day um just take 10 sometimes just taking 10 minutes 15 minutes and then you're sitting so much better oh yes optimal posture um this is a nice um nice thing we're going to talk about this what we try to achieve is that your upper back is straight that your lower back is supported supported that you're really sitting on your sitting bones and that you're sitting all the way over here from three till four on your chair don't move who of you is sitting now on uh, the front of the chair just take your hands up nobody everybody's sitting back perfect because i see this a lot the people ah you are which gives a lot of pressure in the wrong place etc i'm going to talk about this so you have to distribute the the pressure and when you sit in front of the chair no way that your lumbar spine is supported it's impossible so we really have to do that your feet must be on the floor um your forearm or your elbow needs to be bended in this way i'm not really happy about this situation we're going to talk about that i do believe that your elbow must be in this position so i do agree with the six but i don't think we achieve that in the way that we see in this picture and all this is that we have our head straight on our body and our eyes more or less on the same level as the top of your screen especially with laptops very often you look down all the time not even talking about uh, tablets or telephones or all that 
Um, let's just go through this. Okay, so this is in your uh, guide in the PDF file, material that you need before we even go to talk about how you set it up. What do you need? Indispensable, the chair. I understand not everybody has the perfect office chair. You don't have place for it. You don't have money for it. They are expensive. I do recommend them, of course. When we are going to work in a different area, we buy a better car or we buy a four wheel drive because we live in a campo, uh, all for our safety and being more comfortable. When we're going to work at home, we take the old kitchen chair, we get the old table out of the um, uh, closet somewhere and that's it. But just sitting on it, it's your work. Uh, it's where you are many hours a day. If you go for a hike on Sundays, you buy good shoes. How much do they cost? If it's already good shoes, pretty a lot. And it's only one Sunday. This is for an everyday thing. So don't be too afraid to do something. And it lasts for 10 years, 15 years. It's not something that lasts only for uh, one night, like these beautiful shoes that you buy to go to a wedding. Um, and because sometimes we just have our priorities a little bit different. What you cannot do is the chair that I am sitting on at the moment, but that's my dining table chair, but I'm not behind the computer so many hours uh, in a day. My work is hands-on because what happens, the seat is inclined, tilted a little bit backwards. Do you see that? If you see that on the blue lines, it's going a little bit backwards. So that makes me sitting backwards and if I want to screen, I will automatically do this or going to sit on the, the edge of the chair, which is how you find me in my dining um, chair actually quite a lot because they were bought by a husband with really long legs and uh, oh, uh, before he met me. So oh, that's me. So anyway, if... You can use your dining table chair and I'm going to guide you how you can uh, use them better than what you probably do now. But if this is the case, if it tilted backwards or if the, um, the back part is going backwards, there's no way. You must be supported in your lumbar spine, which means you must sit back in your chair and you need a support over here. If we all just relax in a lumbar spine, if we can do that now, that you just feel, let me change my camera a little bit. So you just relax, you just, you just relax in your lumbar spine. You immediately will feel that, let me see. If I relax, you immediately will see that my head is going to be forward. And then if I can't see very well on my screen, I'm doing this. If I support my lumbar spine, you can easily do that now very, um, very quick, just to feel what I mean with your hands really low, really low. It's more the pelvis than your lumbar spine. If you just support it with your wrists and you suddenly notice that your head is staying in place, it's not getting forward. You can't get nowhere. So this is really indispensable for many things. And a good eyesight, ladies, um, glasses. Um, glasses is the first thing. And, but sometimes you can change things on your screen that you're more comfortable because your eyes do have muscles, a lot of them, or in a small area. And muscles need oxygen. And oxygen is coming and the waste product is going when you move. 
So if you stare and you keep staring, you don't move your eyes. Um, that all leads to dry eyes that you don't see well, because like a muscle with muscle pain, an eye that gets tired doesn't see so well. And when you don't see well, you go forward just to have a good look at the screen. And that gives uh, like a domino effect that adds up to other problems. So good glasses, I'm getting on this age that um, you suddenly start to need glasses, different glasses than you used and do that, go for that. Um, reading glasses, I really want, I don't know if you have an optician in the Costa Women because reading glasses are measured for reading and reading is a distance pretty nearby. Distance glasses are for the distance far away. Your computer is somewhere in between. So I find that I need reading glasses, let's say the plus uh, 1.5, but for the computer, I need plus 1.0 because it's somewhere in between. So have a look about it and, and really be honest to yourself if you see well and invest in some good glasses. So material needed. We talked about chair, glasses, an external keyboard and mouse. I'm just going through this because we talk about it, what you do with them. But having your hands on the laptop is lifting your wrist a little bit off the table. Um, a mouse, because if not, if you just use this pad on the laptop, you're getting micro movements that leads to, um, you use the same muscles all the time, so they get tired. Chair with a lumbar support or a pillow. You, you can just use a pillow. It must be really low in your chair. Sit back in your chair and then you're supported. These things are three or five euros. I used to sell them in dun stores. They don't do that these days anymore, I think, but you can easily buy them on the internet and they are working pretty well. You just stick them in your lumbar spine. So just little aids for small money that you can do uh, probably things that you have at home to, um, to sit better. A pile of books or a little drawer organizer that you can bring your uh, screen a little bit higher. It must be on more or less the top of your screen, more or less eye level. If not, your neck is constantly uh, bended. A holder for your phone or tablet. Many of us use very often the phone or tablet next to our laptop. And if it's flat, you you have to do the uh, you have to look down all the time. You're with your fingers there all the time. You don't see if uh, people are cold. Just buy a little holder, five euros, maybe 10 euros, set them up, and then you can just touch like this and not all the time looking down and getting your text, um, your text thump or text neck. Sorry, this was not what I meant. Um, sometimes you need Glasses, that depends, of course, individually. Uh, computer glasses are glasses that are made to take the blue light, from the screen light away. I don't have experience with them, but when I was work, uh, when I went on location to do this presentation in the bank and they were all the time with these big screens with all the small ciphers and stuff. And I really think then computer glasses can help you um so it depends a little bit how often are you on the screen how how much time some food support if you have short legs like me um and some padding for sharp edges don't you feel that that when you have your forearm all the time on the edge of the table you're getting uncomfortable so when we have the material you can set up your station 
And again, this is all in your guide. Where do you sit? First, take an account window and uh, light. Light is something difficult. I see many of you are outside and that means that many of you have a lot of light in their face. And that means that you are doing this with your eyes to, go, uh, to see the screen. No problem. Bad posture is not a problem for a short time. So when you call a friend or you just want to be in the sun for five minutes and you, you're on the screen, no problem. It's time. In the end, you're sitting through this presentation for a long time. You're trying to look at me. And before you know, one hour of doing this. No circulation to your eyes because all the time you're like that. And um, it's it just not good, especially when you have light in your face. A friend of mine had a lot of headaches, came to the clinic often uh, that I could treat her. Then she invited me on location to do this presentation. And I walked around to see where everybody was sitting. And I found her in the reception sitting in front of a very big window looking outside so she could see everybody coming in. And with this lovely marble uh, pavement in front of her window. So she had all the time the light in her face causing headaches. So you, you, you should, um, when there is no other option that you sit like that, try to shield it when you have to sit in that for uh, more than half an hour or something like that. Ventilation, we talked about air, we need oxygen, it needs to come from something, it comes from outside. Heating, when you're cold, you're going to do this. And just some practical information, if you have a, well, cold days are over now, but um, they were last week. If you're really getting cold, the best, a uh, way to put your heating is under your table. If you had a little radiator, you put it next to you, you don't get so much heating out of it than when you put it under your table. It just warms the table, so your forearms that are resting on it, it, it uh, heats up the material that you use and um, warm air just goes higher and higher. So if you have it under the table, it just comes up to you anyway. If you have it next to you, it just goes straight above uh, warming up your ceiling. So it's much more economic to put it under the table. And so when you have found your place where you want to sit, the next steps or that your laptop, that your screen, uh, if you have a desktop or far back on the table on top of a pile. So the top of the screen is on eye level, far back. Why? Because I want you to have your keyboard pretty far away from you. And it must be in front of your screen. So the screen really far back, keyboard far away on the table. Because why? After we did it, if you have an office chair, you bring it pretty low. Any other chair, you sit back in your chair, please, with your lumbar support. You pull your chair under the table and then you can rest the whole four arms on the table. And I made a picture of myself. The whole four arm is on the, is on the table, which means I can relax my shoulders. Because ladies, if I only have half, I'm going to do this. Just a little bit. Hmm. But hour after hour after hour. And then we get all this tension. And you try to lift your arm, etc. Forearms on the table. All the pictures about a good posture you see. And that was one of the pictures that I used just a minute ago. Well, two minutes ago, sorry. Here it is. You see this. 
And then you say you have to rest your forearm on the armrest of your chair. Hmm. I find that first, most people don't have the armrest on the chair or not, not a, a good one. They're not on, the, on a good level. And very often it makes you sitting in, um, on the front part of your chair. I don't like it. I prefer that you bring your chair low so you can pull it under the table. Let's go back to myself, my picture. So your belly is really touching uh, the table. Your whole forearms can rest. I brought my laptop on top of a pile. I'm never sitting like this because I don't sit so often, uh, so many hours behind the computer. Um, but when you sit for a longer time, you should be able to work on a normal keyboard, not on the keyboard of your laptop. And, and your keyboard must be far away. So I must lift a little bit my um, laptop to, uh, to be able to bring the keyboard underneath. And if you use a little drawer, which is what my husband does, he has all here a little, he is taller, so he needs a bit higher. He uh, uses a little drawer here, and then you can put in your stuff, talking about decluttering your uh, table, which is in some one of the next uh, sessions. So if you have all that, if you sit back in your chair, you put your chair on, or everything is far away from you, so you can rest your whole forearm. Depends on how big you are. Place your foot support if needed. Hardly any way you need it if you bring your chair back uh, very low and you pull it under the table. But anyway, sometimes we do need it. This pillow supporting your lumbar spine really low, indispensable. Place your phone or your tablet where you can see and use them without bending your neck so on the holder. Uh, take care of your sharp edges. Just use some padding. You can use any material, but you can buy very, um, very cheap in any uh, shop. And then you're at least much better. So if we have a well set up station and we work for that, what do we do to prevent injuries, breaks? Let's talk about breaks, so important. Because remember, it's the lack of movement for a longer period of time. So we sit as good as possible, but any good position, if you maintain it for a longer period of time is going to hurt you in one way or the other. So you need to move, you need to break this posture and you need to schedule that. Um, we're talking about big breaks, more than 15 minutes. And we have to do that at least every two hours. You remember when you're driving car? What do they say? Stop your car every two hours, get out. For many reasons that you move your joints, that you rest your brain, because your brain needs to recover as well. If it goes on and on and on, it uses all this oxygen. And we just need to recover. Recovering time is as important as um, doing the good thing, okay? You, you really need it. So every two hours, you really need a break of more than 15 minutes without a screen, because we are on the screen all the time. It's not your laptop, your desktop, your phone, your no screen to rest your eyes. That's why you have to stop the car as well, because you're fixing your eyes on the road. You have to rest your eyes. Um, and after four hours, you really need more than 30 minutes. OK, so that's the normal working day in an office, is it? After two hours, you have a coffee with your colleagues. That's how I remember we did that a long time ago. After two hours, we had our coffee break. After four hours, we had our lunch break. Two hours later, we had a tea break. And again, two hours later, we went home. That was our eight uh, hour office day. It was because of something. 
not because your boss wanted that, because it were the office rules. Remember that. And then we have the small breaks, the mini breaks that are that you're recovering your or trying to re, to give a little bit of break of remember when I said when you do this, which is not a bad movement at all, after 45 minutes, you really want to move a little bit. And screens are absorbing before you know you're there so much longer than 45 minutes. So a mini break. This mini break is, mm, you have to schedule, you have to do it more often if needed. And I often schedule that for my patients because the more problems they have, the more often they need their mini breaks. Um, but if you're okay, if you're healthy, 45 minutes, okay? And this is not meant that you lose the concentration of your work. So we're going to talk about what do we, are you going to do in this mini break? This is just that you can have your two hours of, of work without interruption, with, that you keep concentrated, but you do something to keep your body healthy and your brain. So mini breaks, make a plan what you do these breaks. Planning, Lauren? There you are again, because if you don't, if you just stand up, you think, oh, what I'm going to do, you're not productive. And in the end, you're going back to your screen because you want to go back to your work and you don't want to lose the concentration of your work. So make a plan what you do these breaks, the big breaks. That is the office coffee break where you talk to your colleagues and you have, uh, so you move. You move to go to another room to make a coffee. You call a friend, no screen, please. A friend, you can talk perfectly with a friend. You just say hi on the screen and then you, you, you just take it off. You can do your exercises if you need to, if you want to, you walk the dog, household task, perfect, uh, the dishwasher, or just set up something for lunch or um, whatever, but no screen and move, get out of your chair. So this is at least after two hours, okay? This is when you stop the car, you get out of the, of the car to have a coffee, which means you stand up, you walk, you have your coffee break, mm, you talk to somebody, in a normal way, in a personal way. And then you go back to your chair and you sit down. That's what you do in your big breaks, but plan them. Your mini breaks, you can stay in your chair. It's, I don't want you to interrupt your work, um, but there are many exercises you can do in your chair. You, there are many exercise programs exercising in your chair. If you have um, a quick look on the internet, you will find one immediately. So, and it's all about just moving once or twice your neck, just moving once or twice your back, just your shoulders, uh, look up, look down, mm, stretch. Just 30 seconds, one minute, uh, two minutes if you want, but um that's all that's all what your a healthy muscle needs to move when i clinch my fist it's all what i have to do is something like this for 10 seconds or for 20 seconds this is only my hand so you have more muscles obviously and so take a little bit of a longer break than the 10 seconds uh, but that's all that I need. So then I can rest it again for another 45 minutes. So you can stay in your chair, but do something in your chair, please. And get one moment your eyes out of this staring position. So at least look once up and down, move your eye muscles, which is just moving in another distance, just moving uh looking at another object that's all that you need for your eyes well for your hand it's like this 
for your eyes and just moving another distance, another muscle, uh, another object, okay? And of course you can get up if you want, uh, get a, but, but a small break. If not, you lose concentration on your work. Get, a, get quickly a drink, go to the toilet, or press the button of your washing machine, something like that. But schedule that. Um, if I just sit down, no, we go to that later. Tools that we can use for our breaks, a timer, we have timers for everything. We can use timers for everything. So please use the timer for your breaks on your phone, on your computer, wherever you want, for your mini break, because screen is absorbing. You, uh, you forget time. My coffee always grows cold when I'm doing things like this. So a timer, because if not, you're not going to do this. Your exercise program ready to use. So you just have it somewhere that you can say, oh, that's right, it's my mini break. I just give a click on this PDF file I have ready and I stretch this, and I stretch that, and I look up, that I look down. A small program, it's only one minute, but ready to use. Or when you have the big break and you want to do a bigger program, ready to use. If not, you're losing a lot of time from your work. You can use websites for programming breaks. Um, I think my husband uses something like Pomodoro. In it, it, it's all connected that you have your mini break, your coffee break. Um, okay, so if we talk about a work day, it's you're going to sit ready over there uh, after 45 minutes, mini break, another 45 minutes, mini break. After two hours, you stand up and you have your coffee break, and so on. We uh, yeah. It, this is all in again in a PDF uh, file. So healthy work habits for a more productive day. First, bad habits. I always tell people if you come to my clinic because you have a pain and I tell you what you should do and which exercises you should do, you can do the best exercise program. But if the rest of the day you're sitting like this, it's not going to work. Um, you have to quit your bad habits before you install the good ones. One bad habit often spoils a dozen good ones. We just have to realize that. So sit down for five minutes and think about what am I actually doing? How am I sitting? What is it what I have to change? And what came to my mind was poor posture. Well, we talked about that and distractions. If because a more productive day you have when you can concentrate on your work and you don't concentrate when you have distractions all the time. So one of the things that I do we have is that I sit down and then after two minutes, I think, oh, the washing machine. Um, if you just program that in your little break after 45 minutes, like I have my 45 minutes of uh, uh, concentration. So Think about distractions. Uh, what is distracting you? And what am I doing all the time to, to get rid of them? Or, or It's a more productive day you have and you can concentrate on your work. So help your eyes. We, eyes are one of the main things that we, it, it is what we use all the time and screen is absorbing. So use, for example, the contrast button on your screen. This is my screen. The contrast button for me is a bit above the two and the three, but it are these little uh, things. We are at home, we have sunlight. So probably we have a different light in the morning on our screen than in the evening. And it's very easy to use your contrast button, just some clicks. I, I don't know if you can see my, yes. I'm just using mine now, and I think you hardly see anything anymore. And then I put them up and you see my screen, it's different. Use it, know where the button is and use it. 
And the rule is more light outside, so more light you have in your face, the more light you have on your screen, the more light you have uh, to put on your screen, the more you have to turn it up. So you have less contrast, okay? So the darker it is, that's where I use it, it gets darker in my house, then the contrast is so big that I start to, to try to get away from the screen. So I just make it darker. And the same friend that I helped when I worked on location who was in front of this uh, big window, she didn't realize that and she started to use it and it helped her a lot for her headaches because she had her, she thought the opposite. She had her screen really dark thinking I have so much light. Yes, but she had so much light on the back of her computer, but not into her screen. So uh, it's different. Use this one. It helps you. Change the color of your screen or your letters if you are more comfortable with them. Where are you comfortable with? Some people are comfortable with the black white. Other people are comfortable with the green uh, yellow. Mm. You have to install it only once. So if, uh, again, just a couple of minutes, try to find out what you can do. And bigger letters. It's very easy to have bigger letters. Open your PDF file and with a, you hold the control button and then you scroll with your mouse and you suddenly have bigger letters. You don't have to do anything else and you see better. It saves you from the glasses again and you can just move on and forward, know where the buttons are and then you can use them easily without thinking. And it helps, it helps your eyes. Well, maintain your posture. And that means use the keyboard instead of the phone and the mouse, actually. Please use apps on the computer because this little telephone and we have all the apps there. It's so small, we start to uh, dig in. Use the apps on the computer, for example, WhatsApp web. Um, that saves me from a lot of thumb problems. Uh, headset, which is uh, obvious um, because we don't have to hold then, okay? The holder holds the telephone and you use your headset. Uh, maybe a little bit off topic, but uh, this comes into schedule and, and being more productive. Start and finish your day. Your brain needs to start and your brain needs to finish. If not, you get headaches because it, it's, you use it all the time. So, well, get dressed. I'm sure that one of the next um, uh, persons talking about this, this problem about a home uh, working from home is going to talk more about that. Why is that important? Start after a morning routine so not getting out of bed and immediately you're, you need oxygen, you need to, to be ready. I warm up if I go to the gym. I warm up my muscles to have a good workout. Your brain needs to warm up as well. So not straight out of bed into your computer, please. You're not productive over there. Have a morning routine. It will be for everybody different, but it's important. And disconnect when you're finished, switch off. Uh, especially your eyes, actually, but disconnect. And one of the things that a friend of mine does who's working uh, in a customer service and, and working on a computer all the time is that she talks to her colleagues um, for about 10 minutes when her shift is due. And then you can just talk a little bit about your work because you need to, to, to finish that. Homework means you get away from the screen, but your brain is still busy with it. So try to relax your brain. It will be for everybody different. We can give each other ideas, but switch off. Because if not, headaches and things like that, tension, feeling tense because you can't switch off is very common. And using your screen in the free time, it just came up uh, before, 
if it's the same computer as work, where I could, because you chat with people, where I could think of was sit somewhere else, sit outside, uh, sit in a different position, hang around in your sofa, um, make sure that your body and your eyes are in a different position. And when you're talking to a friend in your free time, turn off your camera once in a while so you can move. When I talk to my mom, I um, it, a, a camera is really making you being in this position again and your eyes again. So I can talk to my friend. She knows me. I can talk to my mom. She knows me without a camera. So sometimes I just say hi with the camera. Hi, okay, I'm going to switch you off because you're going to be in my back pocket now. And it's a, the phone is in my back pocket. I have my headset on. I can just walk through the house, do my exercises or walk the dog or be in the kitchen or whatever. I don't need to be with the camera all the time in my free time, okay? Podcast, uh, of, of course. And yes, then you can relax and hang around and, and uh, do some things. I'm just going to finish my presentation and then we can talk about healthy work habits if you want. So resume, a comfortable environment, the light, the ventilation, the air, your station set up. Make sure that you have good installed material, your chair, your screen, glasses, that you sit as good as possible. So everything in your body, your brain, your eyes, your, your muscles, your ligaments, have a reasonable blood supply, blood circulation. It needs to go in, it needs to go out, it's, which is why you have to move regularly. Take care of yourself, water, food, glasses. Make sure that you're not in one position for a long time. So move regularly. Plan breaks, set your timer, use exercise programs. And don't forget to look around once in a while, even if it's a mini break, to rest your eyes and your neck. And if we all do that, it prevents injuries. You have a better concentration and more production in your day. And you enjoy better your free time because when you switch on for work and you switch off, you enjoy your free time. And you're not busy with work in your free time, which is why we really have to switch, switch off. And then thank you.